Welcome to the PBC 2020 NBA Draft Remote Film Room. Joining us today is an all Big Ten guard from Michigan, Xavier Simpson. What's going on, Xavier? What's going on? Hey, uh, happy to have you joining us today. Uh, looking forward to talking through your game. Uh, you had a really great college career and you know are known for being an intense lockdown defender, great passer, and just a winner. So wanted to talk about how some of those things will translate to your professional career, maybe a few small areas to work on, et cetera. And to do so, we thought we would bring in uh, one of our scouts here at the PBC who's actually based in Michigan. Uh, he went through all your game film, cut it all up, and found a few plays that he thought, you know, really exemplify what you bring to the table. So uh, let's welcome on Blake Harrison. What's up, Blake? How's it going, guys? Good on, Blake. Without further ado here, I'll pass it over to you guys. Blake, I'll let you take it over here and chop it up with Xavier. And uh, I'll pop back in at the end after you guys get a chance to go through this game film. Perfect. Sounds good. Thanks, John. So, Xavier, man, um, a great, awesome four-year career at Michigan. Uh, how's it feel, man? You've, you've done a lot so far. I just wanted to start by hearing from you and how you feel about your time in Michigan. Uh, it feels great. Um, honestly, I'm blessed. I'm honored to be in the position I was in, uh, to be able to come in my first my first year, my second year, be able to learn from some vets, um, just being able to take some of the knowledge, being able to learn the game more from a different perspective. And um, my junior and senior years of being able to have a chance to be the leader and being able to lead my team um, the, the most in the best direction I possibly feel we can go. So it was good. I'm definitely blessed to um, have a coaching staff as well. The coaching staff has definitely taught me a lot. I've gained a lot of knowledge over the course of the last four years and excited to begin my prof professional career. That's perfect. That's perfect. So we'll go into a couple of areas that you know we really think are going to be um, huge aspects of your professional career. So a um, couple of things that you showed to uh, really strive in are the pick and roll and an ISO. Uh, but of course, we have to start specifically with your patented hook shot. So uh, tell tell everyone you know where that came from, where that originated from, and you know how you use it to be effective on the floor? Um, yeah, pretty much. Obviously, I'm a small guard, um, six-foot guard. And I think it may have started my freshman year in the open gym. It was kind of like an accident shot, but it felt kind of natural. It felt kind of it felt normal. It felt like something I could implement in my game. And I did it at work against someone who was taller than me. Um, so I just pretty much perfected my craft, kept working at it, um, got more comfortable, began to use it in open gyms, practice, um, game a few times. Then after a while, um, I pretty much nailed it down. That's awesome. And yeah, in both of these clips, you're in the first one, you're doing it against a smaller guard. And then the second one, uh, you've done it against uh, a big man. I think he's about 6'11 uh, for Wisconsin. So you're really showing that you're able to pull this off in a lot of different ways. And I was just wondering, how, how have you approached attacking guys um, – big or small with that shot? Um, I feel like it's just, it's, a, it's a feel to it. Um, as you can see in the first clip against Purdue, um, the shot clock I was was pretty much going down. Um, they kind of – we were running our play and they kind of stopped it or whatever. So it was just – I seen like an open, had him on my side and just wanted to make sure I had my body body kind of on his side or in front of him uh, with the ball away protecting it so he won't be to give a steal. And after that, it's pretty much just – repetition, focus, and having a locked in mentality to be able to knock it down. And with um, the second clip against, I think that's Reeves. Um, this was a late shot clock, as you can tell, seven on the clock. So pretty much it has to be a shot going up pretty soon. So calling for a screen, he kind of, they play like a drop, so he kind of cut me off. So that's when I kind of just freeze by just looking back. And um, he kind of opened up his left leg, giving me that lane. And right there, that's when I pretty much knew. Uh, yeah, it's over. The hook is coming. Yeah, yeah, that hesitation really got him there too. And I, I was wondering, have you practiced? Like, do you prefer shooting that shot off the glass or just dropping it in all net? Is there uh, a method to your madness there? Um, if I had to choose, I would prefer shooting it without the glass. Um, I'm not even sure why the glass is it's, it's easier, um, but. 
Yeah, I'm not sure. I honestly, um, both of them works. The glass obviously is much easier, but then again, um, as you can tell in the second clip, just going from it uh, without no glass, it, it involves a lot of touch and feel for it. So I feel like that sometimes when I don't touch the glass, it kind of rattles around the rim um, because of a soft touch, but either one works fine. For sure. So then going on to the uh, the next clip here. So we're going to get a little bit more into the pick and roll and some of the things you do here. So here you're going up against uh, Maryland, Jalen Smith, hit the crossover, and you go right to the rack. And so I wanted to add this clip in here because you're going to be going up against a lot of bigs like Jalen Smith in the NBA. So yeah. when being a six-foot guard, you know, what's your approach to attacking those kind of guys? Uh, in this situation – I had a terrible first half, but it was I, it was kind of good because it gave me a chance to just pretty much watch how the game is being played. And I knew the guards on me in Cowan. I knew he was um, – I felt like they were teaching more just getting over the screen, not really getting to the body and forcing them over. And they're, and, Jay, and Jalen Smith, he was, he was kind of jumping up to the ball screen with both of his feet. So when he jumps up, that means his feet stop. So I knew the split was going to be there with John setting a good screen – and I was just – after that, I was trying to put my body, my back on his stomach. Um, so worst come worst, at least be a foul. But if I'm in front of him, I'm pretty much comfortable with making that easy layup. Yeah, you do a great job of just keeping your body in between him and the ball and uh, getting it right up to the glass. And you're showing off that touch that you have. I think that's really going to be important, just making sure you're you know maintaining that as you attack the rim against bigger and taller – um, more athletic defender. So that's awesome. Thank you. Roll to the next clip here. So here you're in pick and roll. You decide to, to stop and pop for the, the three. Um, you really uh, punish defenders on that three-point shot this year, uh, 36% from three. And so I've noticed that you've steadily improved your three-point shot over your four years. Um, you know, what can you attribute to that improvement? Um, just reps. Um I've always been like a rep guy, but I just wanted to go back and just pretty much not break down my shot completely, but just look at it and look at the things that I can change to um, hopefully improve my percentage uh, from my junior season to my senior season. Uh, one of the key things that I focused in from um, the last summer was uh, keeping my elbow tight uh, on my shot. My elbow goes out a little bit, um, but at the same time during the game, you have to be confident in um, your mechanics yourself because everything's not going to be perfect, but the first key was shooting. I feel like his confidence was just something I gained a lot over the past summer leading to my senior season. For sure. And so do you feel comfortable with the three-point line getting a little bit deeper in the NBA too with that yeah. shot to improve that? I do. I do. Awesome. And so obviously here, you know, the defender went under the screen. You made the exact read that you need to make. And you're going to be seeing that a lot in the NBA too when, you know, guys are going to be testing that three-point shot. So – uh, you love to see that you're knocking that down. So then the next clip, a um, little bit more isolation. So I wanted to add this in here because uh, we want to see the the shift in your game. You know, it seems like you're really comfortable on either side of the ball, left hand or right hand. And um, here you do a little in and out cross, right to the rack, something nice and easy. So um, one of your impressive stats on synergy has been that you're in the 95th percentile in isolation scoring. And so you've shown many times that when Michigan needs a bucket, you're willing to go get it. Um, so where did that confidence come from? I'm a, I was a senior this year. I was trying to put it on the line, just have a chance to create the best opportunity for myself and my teammates on just going to the next level or winning the game. And um, I pretty much, that's what seniors do. Um, got to have that confidence. Got to have the confidence. Got to have the killer instinct just be able to go out there and not only score the ball, but also be able to get others involved, um, whether that's diving for a loose ball, rebounding, an assist, just do whatever it takes. Um, that's what seniors do. I wanted to do that this year. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Gotcha. And now do you have anything to say about this clip? Um, this clip, I actually remember this because this is actually one of my favorite clips um, in my career um, because that I think that guy, he, he started off kind of hot, I believe, the guy that was guarding me. Then if you wind it back with me coming down off a fast break, um, I was kind of just setting him up, just kind of looking like I wasn't doing anything. This is all – so I went between the legs as a setup to to get him to relax. Then I seen the other four defenders of his kind of just over there and, like, not close enough for help. I didn't see no help. And I seen, like, maybe two or three of his defenders 
with their heads turned. So I'm like, okay, let me go at this guy. Then that's pretty much where I say them up by going slow between the legs. Then I want to twist my speed quick, like going in and out, cross. Then I kind of removed him from that. And John is a great sealer. So I just thought, okay, now it's just time to focus in and just high off the glass finish. Yeah, and I've noticed that you're really good at your change of pace um, when you have the ball in your hand. So going from quick to slow and back to quick has been a, a really nice addition to your game and uh, just keeping defenders honest and, and off guard. So Definitely. Now we're going to go a little bit more into your passing. So, you know, you led the Big Ten in assists per game, 7.9 per game. It's an awesome number. And uh, – Obviously, you're one of the smaller guys on the court, but you're really able to find the angles to get the ball to your teammates. So they got to love you for that, I'm sure. So you have a little stagger screen here, and uh, you find Teske right inside. Um, if you run that back a little bit, one of the things I like to point out is this hang dribble you have a little. So you try to keep these defenders off balance and honest, where you're just giving them a nice little step and then moving forward a little bit more, nice little hop. And then you get to look and see you have two defenders on you now and a quick jump pass gets it right inside for an easy bucket. So tell me what you see here and kind of how you manipulated the defense. Well, just knowing scouting report, I know that Michigan State uh, pretty much no, pretty much no one in the big teams is just doubling the ball screen. Um, so pretty much right here, I know with two defenders on me, that means one person has to be open. And if he's not open, I have to set up and get open. So I knew with the big on me right now, um, He's not getting back quick enough, so that's putting Tillman in, in, a, in a tough situation to either help or leave Brandon for the knockdown shot. Uh, once I seen him stay and I had two on me, now we're basically playing three on two with the ball in my hand. So obviously John is John is right there open, so now it's just time for me to make the best pass to get the easy two points. And I was pretty much over the top because I seen Big one. His hands were down. So I know yeah. a, a snake quack. A, I'm sorry. A quick snap will get the um, job done. Nice. And, you know, there's – obviously we've seen success from guys like Chris Paul being an undersized guard in the pick and roll. And, you know, it really seems like if you're able to follow his blueprint, you'll have lots of success. So here we have you on the wing. Um, Davis is giving you the screen here. Um, you got Cash behind you and Tillman in front of you. And you drop a nice touch pass right over the top where only Austin Davis can get it. So tell me about this play here. I'm just coming off co – our coach, he usually wants me to speed off Eli when I'm receiving the ball, but obviously this is the Big Ten. This is late in Big Ten too, so obviously teams are going to scout. So I've seen Tillman kind of close to the sideline with not enough room to go by him nor enough room to split. Maybe split, but I'm looking at the other three guys, and you can see um, the guys who's, who's guarding France and Brandon, they're up. Yeah. There's no one in the paint. So I figure if I can just find a way to get – Cash is on me because he's coming off the screen and Tillman to stay a little longer. And as he begins to go back to his man, that's the more I go put pressure on the defense by just making him make a tough decision because Cash is already beat because he's on my back. Yeah. So now I'm just looking at the other the defenders. No one's helping. So I know he's going to be open. Now it's just important to see is it going to be a lob over the top or a bounce pass. In this case, it was kind of like a snap. I snap in the air a little bit because Tillman's hands were down with no one to help. And you're really putting the ball in just perfect position for these guys to score. Um, so roll it to the next clip here. So here we have another screen on the wing. And I've noticed that you like to throw some one-handed passes, one hand left-handed passes too on that. So tell me, tell me your read here and, and uh, you know your ability to make these passes. Pretty much just looking at all the defenders that's not in the play. The scene where they're at, no one's protecting the, no one's protecting the paint. If you can rewind it back toward the beginning, um, yeah, the guy's in the paint, but he's not really in the paint. He's on the opposite block, so he's not there. Then uh, when Dave cut through, his man is still leaving. While we're already setting the screen, his, he turns back to the ball, so he's beat. My man's beat because he's on my back, and the man in front of me has to make a decision: he's going to stop me for me to deliver it, or is he going to go home for me to score it? And um, this is one of my favorite plays, too, because I finally – I've been working on the left-hand pass for a long time. This is, like, perfect. So this was definitely was one of those plays that I, I nourish a lot. Yeah, that's beautiful. And, you know, being able to come off screens both sides, 
left or right-handed and feed your big man. Once again, pro pro big men are going to love that if you're able to, you know, keep feeding them like that. Yes. All right. And so let's roll this clip here. So here, of course, they heavy hedge the screen. And so you take that step back, that retreat dribble, and boom, you look and you see your man wide open, John Teske wide open in the middle and hit him. So obviously you're going to get some hedge when you start knocking down that three-point shot in the NBA. So you know, what are your thoughts on on this kind of uh, this kind of play here? My thought was on this one. Um, I knew they were hedging kind of early before the screen was even being set. So I told John to do like a touch screen. Come, slightly touch him and just leave. Don't even hit him. And obviously with two on me with Isaiah Livers, who's a 40% uh, three-point shooter, I knew he could have stayed in there long. If he was, it would have been a simple pass to Isaiah. But when I put my ball up over this, this creates indecisive positioning for that guy who's tagging. So now I'm kind of looking at him to see which one he's getting to. Then on this situation, he leaves early with the other two guys. This is actually a good play by Eli because he's down screening, making the other two guys less focus on me and worry about their man. So they're not even held position. So those who are already canceled. Then with John having his hands wide, I just put it back and just reading that guy that's guarding Isaiah, which he left early, making an easy pass for me and to deliver it for John. Now to the people that watch at home, they can't really see the, the kind of things you're doing with your eyes um, or just like the fakes that you're making. So is that a big part of when you're making these kind of plays is, is looking off your defenders? Yes, definitely. Um, eyes is definitely key because when you're a defender, you're naturally going to look at someone's eyes or a vision to see, to anticipate a play. Um, so I kind of looked, I, I kind of turned my head, but looked at John. I'm looking at John, but I turned my head as I was looking towards Isaiah, and that's, yep. why, that's why he left. And then with two on me, obviously that's a pretty simple pass to make to John and get the easy bucket. Awesome. Keep on rolling here. It's not here. You're against Purdue. Got a second screen there. And so I wanted to add this clip in because, once again, you're using that left hand. Um, I wanted to ask you specifically, now, did you just know that that Franz Wagner was going to be there open? Or, like, is this a play that you guys have specifically run? No. Or was this, this is, on field? Yes, this is a play, but they kind of – what Purdue likes to do is keep you on the sideline. So, so, honestly, they were jamming us up a lot. So that's when I try to put him in jail just to get him off me a little bit. Um, after this, he's trying to keep me there. So I put him in jail a little bit just to release a little bit. Uh, then when he got back square, John said he got some meat. And I'm looking at the guy who's guarding France because I know France is pulling up as John is going down. Mm. So I'm looking at the guy who's guarding France to see what he's going to do. If he stays with France, obviously John's going to be open because I'm going to contract two defenders. But if he – doesn't go with Franz. Franz is a 40 – I'm not sure. He's a great three-point shooter. That's just a simple pass that you just make. And, uh, but this is actually a key play because Coach Howard Isaac was telling me that I, I was going to need to have to step through because they were scouting us a lot to make that pass. Yeah, I think that's like a perfect pass to be able to find your guy. Um, and it seems like you're a really smart passer and, and just knowing the tendencies, of course, of your teammates, you're really developed – that chemistry with those guys and just knowing where to find them and how to get the ball to them. So you really do a great job. And once again, that left-handed pass, I mean, I was just impressed as I was going through your film, seeing how you're able to make some of these passes. Yes, definitely. Uh, definitely put in time for it. Uh, just, I just want to be, a bit, be able to be a point guard that can deliver the ball in the right spots in the right situations on time, on target, things that matter. It's perfect. So then I want to go into a couple areas where you can improve on the offensive end. So uh, one of the things is in transition. Um, so that obviously that's a tough one. Um, and just with your reaction, I want to let you talk about this play and what you might have wanted to do better here. Yeah, I'm not sure how I missed this, but I should have gotten a lot wider from the beginning once I saw I wasn't receiving the ball. If you could, yeah. Franz has it now, so I should be getting wide. Yeah. to put 13 in an indecisive position to either stop the ball or help off me. I should be getting a lot wider. Then that just comes to just focus, which happens sometimes, but I don't think it was I was lacking focus. I just happened to miss. Um, 
but it's just something I got to just knock down. I got to make that 100% for the first thing to get wide. And as a guy who's going to be creating a lot of steals, we'll go into your strengths and a little bit on defense, but you know, you're going to be in a lot of transition opportunities. So converting on those kind of plays is, is what you want to, what, excuse me, what you want to see. Um, and so and if we can go back to that, um, that play against Ohio State real quick. Yep. So something that you might want to do there is finish with that left hand. So um, I don't know if this is it here. So this one, I want to include this play because this is like the perfect kind of transition for a six-foot point guard, right? Like you did a nice reach through right when you got to the point of attack at yeah. the rim. And I think that's just an unlucky bounce, but that's exactly what you wanted to – to do here so have you been working on like just finishing it in traffic and in transition at all yes i've been working on it working on it a lot um that's something that should be a no-brainer i should be able to do that should be able to finish this, this play should be able to finish in traffic um so yes that's definitely something that's being implemented good good because yeah that's really an ideal finish for you here yeah and so going to that uh the clip against rutgers and so Another point is just making some some better decisions at times. So here you just got caught in the air, uh, wanted to make a quick pass, try to get to the corner for a three. Um, I know you try to use some jump passes in your game. And uh, so what were you thinking on, on this play here? You want to try to get get it there pretty quickly? I would, yeah, this was, a, this was a mental breakdown. I feel like – I don't want to say a mental breakdown, but this was just a bad, bad play, bad possession. Um, I have – that was they played good defense, but at the same time, I shouldn't have made that pass. Once I got it from the outlet and seeing I didn't have numbers with two on me, one trail and one in front of me, I got to be able to recognize that there's a guy in the paint with Eli's cutting through. Um, the trail man is going to the corner. I got to be able to bring this back. John is down the court, so this was a perfect situation for him to come from drag scheme and then play off that. But this was a bad play, um, lack of discipline. Yeah, and there's definitely things you know. These are things you can clean up very easily. You know, as you're watching these plays over film, um, you know, definitely things that you can uh, improve on for sure. And so as a guy who has high assist numbers, there are a little bit higher of turnover numbers as well. And so watching these types of plays and just learning from them will, uh, will help you progress forward here. So on this play, you got a great rip from the big man. Doing one of the things you do best, getting steals. And so that's obviously one of those times where you're, you're going to convert to a transition opportunity. Um, here it looks like you might have just tried to uh, be a little too fancy. Um, but you had a four-on-one. And so if you could do this play over, what would you do here? If I could do this over, number one, I should never throw a straight line pass in a tight situation like that. Those, pretty, those never really work. Um, but I would either go up Austin because Austin – we play well off each other. He's trying to, he's trying to seal that guy for me, or I would have just gave it to France and have France make a layup, or maybe a bounce pass to Dave. But if I could do it all over, I would just finish it or give it to France. Or if I was going to Dave, it would be more of a bounce pass because every defender's first reaction on a pass is to go um, like side to side. Their reaction is kind of have to go up and down. Um, bounce pass would have worked, but. Should have been a pass to France or finish right up Austin. For sure. And really, like I said, I mean, you're going to be a guy who's going to be creating so many opportunities in transition that we would want, you know, you creating these steals and then getting out on the break and making easy looks for yourself or your teammates to be ways for you to be on NBA floors and stay on NBA floors. So definitely something to, to think about and, and uh, improve on going forward. So cool. if you want to roll this clip here. So here, doing one of the things you do best is getting steals. So, I mean, really, you're a pesky defender. Yep, we'll talk about that in a second. Pesky defender, active hands, and uh, you get the steal there. And so, keep rolling it. Get out on the break. And uh, here, it looks like you were, wanted to go to the basket, possibly go towards more of that hook shot. But uh, what were you thinking you wanted to do here? What do you think you could have uh, – what kind of read do you think you could have made that was better? 
Um, number one, don't force it. Uh, yeah. Can you actually, yeah, don't force it. Don't force it and just tack the basket. Left hand. Or actually, I should have threw it up to Isaiah. He can jump. He has great athleticism. It should have been passed to the rim for him to get a nice, late, nice, easy dunk or layup. And I left my feet again, so that's a, that's a, that's an issue. Sometimes it can be good, but sometimes, well, majority of the time, it's not good to leave your feet. You better off staying on the ground. So if you don't pass it, you still have your pivot foot, being able to maneuver out the situation. For sure. All right. So now we're gonna move into uh, some defensive strengths here. So if we want to roll the clip, and I like this play here because it's nothing specifically of, you know, you're getting a steal or anything, but just digging at the post, just being a guy that's, you know, giving pressure to the offense. And you had a nice closeout on the three. So what's your approach to the defensive end? I'm just having a mindset, just trying to work hard, uh, make sure you're communicating, uh, make sure you're down core and ready, uh, just doing the small things, communicate with your teammates on the positioning, let them know where you're at on the court. I got your help here. Force me in this direction. I'm here in this direction. Uh, Franz passed him off, and I knew if he passed it out to the guy who just shot it, I knew he was a decent shooter, so it was important that I uh, leave my feet second, which was on the Skyrim port, and um, still get a closeout. Wow. Definitely wanted to, definitely would like to contest every shot. Absolutely. And, I mean, you're going to be guarding some, some taller guys, so the most that you can do, and a coach will love it is showing complete effort and, uh, you know, getting those closeouts, staying tall, and uh, getting a hand in the guy's face. So that's perfect. 100%. For sure. To roll over to the next clip here. So once again, just catching guys off guard. I noticed you really like to, uh, to pick pockets when guys aren't paying attention. And here, you're right on the back side. He turns away from you. And I was wondering, do you know what is your wingspan? We six, obviously put a line, but we like to to ask the player specifically. Six six. Six six wingspan. So, I mean, you're going to be able to guard, even though you're only six feet. Having a six six wingspan, you, know, you can guard up to three positions. I'd say, you know, in your opinion, what position do you think you can guard in the NBA? Um, I definitely can guard the. Uh, one and one and the two for sure. Um, obviously, with three man, there's a lot. There's size that comes to partake, um, but I definitely feel like I'm guarding one and two. I mean, I think with those those longer arms, you'll be able to to cause some problems for some threes. So, well, definitely, definitely getting under them. But I was thinking the three man more like LeBron James type. But I definitely feel like I'm guarding one, two, and three. But obviously, size is going to become an effect when guys are bigger than you. Um, just natural things that matter, but just but size, hey, doesn't matter that much. Those exactly, are the easiest to get under. They're long, loose with the ball. I love, I love guarding guys like that. Exactly, and that's the kind of mentality you want to have. Um, and we really think you're a, a guy who's going to bring that intensity on defense, regardless of who you're guarding. So, this is the last play here. Uh, once again, um, just being a guy that's ready with the hands. Um, you had a nice swipe up at the ball here. He had the ball high, and boom, get out for a nice dunk. Talk about that play. Yeah, this, this play, um, I had a feeling I was going to get this play because our scout team, obviously we have two-day prep, and they they do their sets and things of that matter. And I actually did this one time in practice, not before Wisconsin, but I actually did this in practice where I kind of just like hit it on my way out while the guard is going through. And um, – I've, I was kind of leapy there and wanted to finish with a dunk. Yeah, show that athleticism. Definitely. So, I mean, these are some aspects of your game that we really think are going to be important for you going forward. Um, mm -hmm. But overall, when it comes to defense, I mean, what, what do you want to say about how you're going to approach the defensive end for an NBA team? I'm going to approach the defensive end with an all-in mindset. I'm diving for a loose ball, active on the ball, doing the most I can to um, make the guy miss. Um, but obviously better offense be better defense. So just contesting every shot, knowing, knowing the personnel, knowing the sky report, 
and just things that matter, just doing what it takes um, to just create some roundness or try to speed them up. Just get him out of his comfort zone, I feel, is, mo- is most important on the defensive end. For sure. Awesome. We'll kick it back to John. Good stuff, fellas. Really, uh, really enjoyed listening to you guys chop it up there and, you know, break down what Xavier brings to the table. A lot of, a lot of nice defensive clips there at the end, like how active your hands are. And that's, you know, been one of your calling cards throughout your time at Michigan. And, you know, definitely looking forward to that uh, proceeding forward into your uh, professional career. So Blake, good stuff. Thank you for cutting up all that film and talking through it with Xavier. Uh, thanks for joining uh, for this remote film room and talk to you later, man. So Xavier, uh, before we sign off here, um, you know, with the uncertainty surrounding this pre-draft process here, right? Like it's unfortunate that you happen to be a senior during the midst of all this COVID-19 chaos and you're not going to get that opportunity to you know, go to Portsmouth like you would have been able to do, right, and show out amongst 63 other, you know, standout seniors and be on that stage and have these uh, intimate, like, workout environments at NBA team facilities and interview and, you know, get pitted against other point guards that are vying for uh, spots on these teams, right? So what we wanted to do is just, you know, give you a platform now to, sort of express what you bring to the table to teams. So for all the NBA teams out there, we just wanted to, you know, have you be able to speak to them directly and say, who is Xavier Simpson? And if a team is to bring you into their organization, what can they expect from you both on and off the court? Yeah, uh, yeah. Xavier Simpson, the point guard. Uh, who works extremely hard on and off the court, just trying to better myself um, as a person and also as a basketball player. Um, staying focused, locked in, watching film, doing the extra things outside of it, stretching, uh, things to get my body right, to keep in shape, um, going to the gym to make sure that I create the right habits, um, the right things, doing the right things, uh, working hard, extremely hard, working smart as well and staying consistent. Um, I play hard. I play defense extremely hard with a pride. Um, every single day I'm working to get my shot better. I know it's, it isn't the best, but I definitely has improved every single season um, at the at the University of Michigan. Um, I'm confident. It's not like I'm shooting because I'm open. I'm I'm confident in my shot. I'm looking to improve my finishes, uh, things that I matter. Just trying to do the most I can to create myself to have an opportunity for the next level. Um, but you'll definitely get hard work, dedication, determined. I'm determined to meet goals, and um, I'm a winner. Yeah, and I feel like if you if you come with that foundation and that baseline of, you know, the work ethic, the right attitude, the, you know, passing vision and IQ and that defensive intensity, you know, I think that overcomes any sort of size limitation and having that wingspan as well to go along with it. You wrap that all together and it, you know, that shows why you were going to be a Portsmouth invite, why you're on the radar for some teams and, you know, why you have some intrigue as a potential prospect after all your success at the college level. So, you know, wishing you the best of luck as you proceed forward here into the pre-draft process, going to be following along and thank you for joining today. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Stay safe. All right. You stay safe too as well, Xavier. Thank you. Thanks again.